Two months of the year, and I hope you guys have been enjoying it. I appreciate the ride. So, see you so soon. Some of us have been using the same chords for over 10 years, 15 years. And so today, we, what we want to do is I'm going to show you how to add 500 chords to every song using Rodney East style of playing. So stay tuned. And I'm going to do something different today. I'm going backwards in technology here. You see I have a piece of paper here so I can write... <coughs> just because I like to write when I talk and I don't know I'm just trying something different okay so today I want to show you how to add um, several new chords and what I want to do hold on my computer is glitching here Uh, let me pause this because my computer is definitely glitching. And believe it or not, I'm going to show you this. I'm going to show you this by just showing you three types of chords. That's it. Just three types. All right, so watch closely. Here are the ones I want to focus on. That one. That's it. I just I just want to do those three. And the three types of chords I want to talk about that's going to open up uh, the amount of chord combinations that you can play. Three types of chords. I'm left-handed, so just wait till my hand moves. All right. Can I see that? This is my first time. Let me let me um see if I can even see my right. Yeah, you can see that. I need a I need a heavier marker. All right, next time. Three types of chords I want to talk to you about. We're going to talk about major chords. 
We're going to talk about sus chords. And I'm going to talk about major seventh chords. These are the only three that we need in order to expand those possibilities. There's obviously more, but for the purpose of this tutorial, I just want to focus on these. Now, how are we going to give that many combinations using just these three? We're going to do that by opening these chords up and using what's called open voicings. And an open voicing is if you take, let's take a major chord, and you're moving this middle down here, like that. So we want to start with the major, and you want to, and what I would do is play an open voiced major chord in every key. So you can have it memorized, right? This is part of the memorization that I was telling you about in some of my other videos where some of this is just memorization. Right? And then just keep going up. This is an E flat major chord. But because we have it voiced in an open way, but it's still an E flat major chord. See it as an E flat major. Okay? See it as, oh, I'm just playing a major chord. Okay, now that's the first type. That's going to open up. That's going to give you a lot of possibilities there. All right, now let's go on to the second one. A sus chord. Now we have different types of sus chords. So we have... In a sus chord, you're going to take... Okay, so let's say we're starting with C, D, E, F, G, A... B and C. That's just the C major scale. Okay, and so if we have a sus chord, the two types of sus chords are the sus4 and a sus2, but I want to show you something here. A sus chord takes the first note, the fourth note, and the fifth note. So it's one, four, and five for a sus chord. So in the key of C, that would be. Now, what happens in an open voiced sus? But watch what happens when you invert this. Meaning we take this G, you move it down here. So what's gonna happen is this G comes down here and it goes, it moves, inverting this down one, moves it to a quartal chord. Which has a strong, more dominant sound than the sus has, because in the sus sound, you know, happy birthday to you, since it's my birthday, I might as well play that. And then you go, right, sus, you saw, it's, it's, it's kind of, you leave them in suspense. You don't want to, you, you'll never end the song like that because it leaves them in suspense. And so there, so that's, you know, that name sus, suspense, right? But if, if, I, if I'm using this, that would be more on the happy birthday, um, I can use a quartal there. Now, yes, I can use a quartal anytime I can use a sus, but a quarter, quartal chord has a stronger, more dominant sound. Now, what happens if we take this um, and move this F down one? Well, look at that. It changes to a sus two. Now this is interesting because a sus2 uses the first note, the second note, and the fifth. So basically every, so listen to what I'm saying, every sus2 is an inverted sus4 in a different key, right? So we have, I'm sorry, we have a C sus4, inverting it down, changes it to a quartal, inverting it down. F sus2 gives you a lot of combinations, gives you a lot of combinations, and we'll go over that. But guess what? If you invert this down again, and you take this G, <clears throat> this C, and just move it down, all of a sudden you're back to your C sus4. This is a cyclical 
cyclical movement here because it just goes it goes in order like that it just keeps going over and over and over okay so now with that said So now, using this sus principle, I want I want to show you how we're gonna open up some chord voicings. All right, let's go to what Rodney was doing here. I realize I'm going straight into teaching. I'm not even asking a lot of questions like I normally do. But I wanna I wanna show you something. So here, look at this. Right there. Right there. I just want one. See, I don't wanna I don't want to just throw things without and move so fast that we're not. I just want to look at this one right here. So he played an F. Okay, and I don't want to mess up my main sheet here. So he played an F. So on that note, give me something. All right. So he played an F. He's got several options. He's got several options when he plays that F. Okay? He could have played an F major, like we said before. But because you must keep the melody on top, that gives him... Th then he has to move these down. So, this would be your first combination. The other combination would be, okay, so that's one. The other combination would be to move this C down here. Okay, that's two. The other combination, if you wanted to add more notes, would be to fill in all the other notes, which would be, you know, depending on how many you want to fill in, it give you about eight more, maybe. Okay. Go to 10. All right, but be careful. You don't want to. A lot of people just play F chords. This is too many Fs. Why do you have, you know, a pet peeve of mine? Why are you playing three Fs? It, it's, it's unnecessary. And then some people who are on the organ will have the nerve to play an F in the bass too. And some of those people who do that, and they, they only have one A, one C, three Fs. Are you wanting F to dominate? Is that what my ear, because my my ear would hear too many Fs if, if you did it that way. Um, so I, I try to only time I'm going to play um, doubled up on a note is if I want that tone to dominate, not just because I don't have notes to play. You know, you do I want the F tone to dominate? And if so, then play, I wouldn't play three ever unless, you know, you're ending the song or something. But in the middle of a song and in the chord, you know, well, I don't want to use that yet because I'm not on the sus. All right. So uh, let, some of some some people ask me about rootless voicings. I would almost never play the bass, you know, imply it, imply the bass, go with the go with the voice quality instead of trying to always put a root in it. Now, let's go to your second one. If we. That gives us other options. Remember now, a F sus4 would be this. Okay, so one option we can go with is bringing this down. You can have that, that gives you one. That's that quartal sound, but the suspended sound is what we're going for. So when I said we want to make you sound a little bit more like Rod in the East, he, he uses a lot of suspended, open voice suspended chords, and he also uses um, a lot of open voice um, major seventh chords. Okay, so basically, that's going to be... Remember, even though this says B-flat sus2, remember, every sus2 is an inverted sus4, so it's still technically an F, okay? And this is what he uses right here. See this? That's what he uses. Do you, you can hear it. See that? That's so. That's one of the choices. That's one of the choices that we're giving you for suspended for a suspended sound. Now, 
let me go on. Uh, this this next one here, um, that's that chord there, and this is not uh, actually a suspended um, chord. This one is actually more of a D seventh, but without the F there because you know this would be different. But I want I don't want to go into that one. Um, okay, that's another. So for every every note, you have all these combinations and all these possibilities that you can do. Because here is another sus too. And if you listen throughout the song, he's using a lot of sus chords. See that? So let's look at this one. You heard it? See that it it has a distinct the sus the sus chord, and 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 here's where I wanna, cause you know I I do these impromptu I don't really plan them. The sus chord has a distinct major second sound, and the major seventh chord, and I'm talking about voiced in an open way, it has a major second sound that your ear should be your ear should pick up. Whereas the major seventh chord, if it's voiced in an open way, has a, a minor second sound. Now I want you to I want you to let me take this off. All right, now I want you to listen. All right, now let's do this. Um, <clears throat> now, if you listen to this, see that's a that's a now. A lot of people will call this uh, an open voiced sus. Well, they'll say that it's a it's a um, see it major add two. But because this lesson is a um, on sus chords, and we can call these what we want. I'd rather see it as an A flat sus two add three. <laughs> okay. All right, and and then I'm gonna move that down. So this, but I'm trying to focus on these two notes together. The fact that the sus chord has that major second sound, as opposed to the major seventh sound. Listen closely. And a lot of people will use these, but you really have to know what are you going for. Are you going for this, which is dissonant, but still not as dissonant as this. So you've heard people do. Those are major seventh chords voicings, but we're because we have the. Let me let me show you what I mean by the major seventh chord voicing. This is an open voiced, right, taking the C, moving it down. That's all it was. Now this is a major seven, A flat major. There is a G. That's the seventh. So we're still taking the C and moving it down. But by taking this G and moving it next to the A flat gives you a minor second, which is very dissonant, which is why you hear it in a lot of background type talk music sometimes. Um, uh, Paris Bowens used it in the Hallelujah the, um, that I put up. Um, Right, and you have won the victory. Right, you have won. So these are these are where people are coming up with that, uh, the major seventh open voicing. But they're not sus, and this is the reason why I said we can add so many different combinations. Because when I went back to here, that E is on top. So if someone were if someone were playing. Uh, as long as the E is the melody, you could choose just based on how dissonant you want to sound. You could go with a major sound and avoid the avoid any any of these intervals altogether. Bringing in a sus makes it even a little bit more a little bit more dissonant. Bringing in a, a major seventh makes it even more dissonant. So now you're choosing what you want to use based on how dissonant you want to sound and you're not just throwing chords together just because you know I want to sound fancy but you you are your ears informing how dissonant you want to sound based on the kind of voicing you want to use 
here. Okay? That's the way we play. That's the way that, uh, that's the best way to do it. Should I? No, I, I want to. Let me let me show you another example um, of this. It's in um, it's in Kimberell's. Um, uh, uh, you know, it's in Kimberell's. Uh, My faith looks up to thee, and um, okay, I had to I had to cut the video short, and um, let me explain why, and it will also give you uh, some insight into. Uh, last week and a lot of things that happened so I want to share it with the community that that I have here and um, and by the way I really appreciate a lot of you have been emailing me you've been hitting me up on Facebook um, you've been talking to me and um, w the reason why I I'm recording this after the video I, the reason why I had to leave half of the video off was because I played a song from Kim Burrell's um, one of her CDs to prove my point on how you can use the open voicings. The problem is if I if I upload that song um, as it is and I upload it to YouTube, YouTube will f will say they'll flag it and say, "Well, this song has copyrighted content." And so what will happen is it's possible it's possible that the video could be muted. Um, you know, they, 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 they give the copyright holders or whoever holds uh, the copyright, you know, a, a large say in how they want what to do, you know, what they want to do with that video. So basically, for that reason, I, you know, I don't want to include that part in this video here. So, so what I'm going to do is whoever wants to, you know, if you want the MIDI file, then what I'll do is I'll include that part that I had put in where I was explaining the open voicings and things with the Kim. I'll just, you can just get that with um, the MIDI file. Or if you just want that video and you don't want the MIDI file, you know, I'll just, you know, I'll take something off. I'll, I'll make it reasonable, but um, that way you can, you know, just get what you want if you're wanting that. But I didn't want to upload it to YouTube with just that because then the whole video comes down <laughs> and that was the problem last week well that was kind of the problem last week youtube did not flag my video last week um a lot of you ask what happened to last week's video um teaching wise last week's video was very inspirational from from me because what you got to understand about teaching these things and right now i'm talking so if you're if you want to go you can go i'm just talking right now to the to people who really follow me closely so i'm not really teaching but i want to you know i need to explain that teaching these comes by inspiration so there's a lot of hard work that comes into anything like you know but when Corey gets up there and it sounds like he's just improvising off the top of his head we know that that's not the case we know that this man has been practicing we know that he puts in the work we know he puts in the time right and so that when he comes out what comes out as creativity is really hard work i guess that will be it i got hopefully you guys hopefully you appreciated this view on rodney east and and how he approaches it i i really took just a few concepts uh when i when I, I this is a recording this is my uh second or third recording of this and when i recorded it the first time i actually almost went through his whole song and showed every chord but i this time i did i did the teaching that i like more which is concepts um instead of just showing you you know every chord showing you his approach and showing you how he would approach it and how he approached this particular song and then hopefully you can go and grab some of the concepts and implement it with some of your songs. The goal is not to sound like Rodney East, even though I use those as my titles and YouTube, you know, that that's really more for traffic and those things that I put up there. But but honestly, you know, my my goal and my desire is for you not to sound like Rodney East, but for you to sound like you. But to be able to have 
different ideas and concepts and people to pull from. So someone could say, you know, now here's how Rodney East would voice this. And there, here's how um, here's how Corey Henry would voice this. You see what I'm saying? To have several things to pull from your arsenal and not just to sound like a carbon copy of somebody else. So that that's the kind of how I, I do that. But of course, um, in, in my titles, I'm going to probably use those. But, you know, you guys understand. All right. So hopefully you enjoyed the video. Let me know if you did. Um, we'll, we'll, we'll continue this conversation in the comments. Uh, don't forget to like the video and subscribe to the channel if you have not already. And join our family over here and uh, we will see you later. So uh, that's a B, uh, B flat major seventh, um, right? But see, this gives you so, so many different combinations because where F sits, F is part of a B flat chord, but F is also part of an F chord. F is also part of a D flat chord, right? And F is, you know, part of a, a G minor seventh chord. So this is where all your combinations come because since F is part of all those chords, open all of them up and then find out what you want to do. Don't don't play a bass first. You know, sometimes I would do that first. So I would go and based on the bass note, okay, so you know, play something in the C bass, okay. Or then someone say, "Well, uh, give me something with a D bass, okay." You know, or, you know, we would just make up bass notes or play something with a G bass or an A or an A flat or uh, play uh, something with a G flat. You know, and uh, we would just make, you know, make up chords based on the bass note. But but in reality, um, your best way to do it would be to decide beforehand the chord quality you want to hear. And then the bass note is unnecessary. It's rootless because, um, it, you know, it, it's going to be dependent on chord quality you're trying to convey and not so much what the bass note is now this is i'm talking about if you're playing alone okay if you're playing with a band and you're, you are constricted based on what um what the band is playing if you got singers and they have three-part harmony you can't you know be throwing in chords that that don't match but you know we're talking about if you're playing alone um these are some some chord combinations that you can use uh definitely to open up your playing and give you tons and tons of new uh, chord combinations on every note every single note you can you have so many different chords that you can use so when you're going the next one is thou right so you can use based on the sound of this you know, you can use so many different chord combinations. You know, you can just have the typical E flat, maybe E flat and E flat minor sound. A B flat major sound. A C minor sound. With the two or a minor nine. So again, you, you have so many different combinations based, uh, you know, every single note has multiple chord combinations. Um, but of course, and where this gets really complicated and not really, I'm not able to address in one whole video is that, you know, depending on what I use here, the chord after it has to connect. Okay, and that, that goes beyond the scope of this video. Right, this video is only to show you um, that we can open up our chords. We don't have to play the same chords. We can play things.